Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, just the way the show is designed, I, uh, the way it's set up is I, I spend the bulk of the time going through stock requests that have come in for the week. So if you have stock requests, send them over. Um, I, I've actually been, it's been a little slower over the course of the last few weeks. I'm sure that's because of the market dropping, but now things are turning around. So if you've got some stocks of interest, send them over and we can, I can go through them and give you a pretty good insight into what I'm seeing. Um, now, what I do, though, at the start of the show is I start out with a lesson in technical analysis, typically. And uh, most of the time I talk about momentum indicators like MACD and ADX in multiple time frames and how to look at price structure and trend and all that. Uh, however, um, I, I want to make sure I spend a f I give credit where it's due, especially in the environment we're in right now, and that's relative strength. So because I've been working with institutional money managers, I've been helping institutional money managers and consulting with them for over 30 years, relative strength is the most important thing to them. Not absolute performance, but relative performance. And so I spend a significant amount of time going through on a relative basis um, what, what we should be focused on, what areas should we be focused on. And I think this can be a huge advantage even for the individual investor. I think if you focus on the stocks that are that are showing emerging relative strength, I'm not talking about the ones that are necessarily the 99s, um, you know, like the highest score. I'm talking about the ones where their relative strength relative to the S&P is showing a shift. And that's what I want to focus in today on today's lesson. So let's go ahead and get into this now. OK, so I've got a weekly chart of the QQQ up. Um, on the uh, top here, I've got an 18 week line and then I've overlaid this green line, which is essentially the 18 month line. So I've got an 18 week and an 18 month gives us a good feel for the bigger picture trend as well as the intermediate term trend with the 18 week. But if we go and look at the bottom scale, I've got the relative strength line in black and I refer to this as the relative strength. All right. And that is comparative relative strength. I'm comparing in this case, the QQQ to the SPX. What the black line is doing is it is it's showing um, what would happen to the QQQ if the SPX closed unchanged every day. All right. So we're basically dividing the QQQ by the SPX, eliminating any variables in relationship to the relationship to the SPX. And then what's happening is this movement is above or below is showing outperformance or underperformance relative to. So from this point on, this whole move to the upside from the start, literally the first day of 2023, we've been outperforming. This QQQ has been outperforming the S&P. And then if you look at what happened late in 21, it turned down and it underperformed through this whole period, pretty much for the entire year of 22. All right. Now, I, I just for context, I put in these moving averages. I think you can look at the line by itself and you can do trend analysis on the line. You can draw in your downtrends and look for a one, two, three type of reversal. But the moving averages, I think, just give you a nice feel. Um, typically, I only have the 30 up. All right. But what I used to use was an eight. I had an eight, a simple MA, and that's in orange. And as long as the 8 stays above the 30, you're in a pretty solid trend all through this period, right? And then you get this move to the downside. It looks like this might be rolling over after an extended period. Um, but it's it's more of like a warning flare because you end up making a double top, a minor new high, and this kind of pushed higher. But notice the difference. This looks Everything looks fine here. But if you go and you look at what happened to the momentum and you look at what happened to the relative strength, it was giving you some early warning signs that something wasn't quite right. Then the moving average crossed to the downside and um, it stayed below throughout this whole period. And then early here, before we got an official reversal of trend, we started to see this flipping up and the moving average turning up, which I, I, I like to look at the slope of this 30. I like to see that slope which I do with the regular 18 price. 
Um, I do it with average true range uh, in terms of volatility. I like to look at that as a uh, indicator. But when you cross the 18 crosses above, it's a pretty interesting signal. It gives you a little early warning sign. So let me just give you a few examples. Let's look at something like NOW, which again, through the bear market dropped down. We can see this drop down. Eight didn't cross back above. And then when you got above and the, and the, and the moving average started to turn here, it gave you a kind of an early warning sign that things were getting going and that the that there's a pretty good likelihood that we're going to break through the 18 month line. Do you see what's what this is helping us determine how strong this reversal might look? If this line was continuing to be weak like this, then we wouldn't think we could get through this. But with this behind us, we have a much better chance of getting through. Let's look at something like McDonald's, which was a really good stock for a, a decent period of 2022 on a relative basis. This was a great stock. Now, it did cross down below, but I, I want to uh, note, note the slope. You see how the slope of the 30? It kind of tells you what you want to know. Here we crossed down when it was declining, and that's really that was a very strong sell signal. But look at where price was. Price was at an all-time high. So we want to keep an eye out for this. This is a really nice in, – there are instances where this can be a really nice warning signal. Now, for money managers, which is the guys that I work with, obviously seeing something like this is, is a huge advantage. Even though you're not making a whole lot of money, you're, you're making a significant amount of relative performance. So that's why I've been using this indicator for over 30 years this way. Um I, I like it because it finds this emerging relative strength pattern, meaning early in the trend, we're turning things down and we're turning things, you know, turning things around to the upside and flipping things to this way before you get like a high relative strength number. If you were to look at um, O'Neill's IBD number uh, or something like that, it, you know, he's he's they're waiting for this to get up here before the number crosses into a, a higher threshold. I'm trying to identify when it's emerging and shifting its trend. I want to find uh, where the relative strength is starting to show signs of life or where it's deteriorating. So these are the two areas where I'm really looking at things. Just give you a couple more examples. Look at the PLTR. This one's kind of interesting because when this turned up here, it really crossed back here. But when these started to turn up, it hadn't broken out. It hadn't gotten through the 18 month. It gave you kind of an early warning sign that something was going on. And all through the bear market, you knew this wasn't the place to be. It's just a nice confirming evidence. So there are times where you have a stock going down and the, the RS will be going up. That happened in NVIDIA in 2020. In the in the when the market was getting killed in 2020, Nvidia was actually going. The relative strength line was holding up uh, like a champ. Um, we can use this this last example as MDB it had earnings number come uh, yesterday and uh, had a, a nice up day. But notice this again: early warning sign before you really got any evidence. Hadn't really even broken the trend line yet, and this was telling you to be on the alert. Something was shifting here. Because that hadn't happened. We had a declining line here. And then as this started to turn up, it's right about here. This was turning up. The 8 was above the uh, above the 30 and they were rising. So here, inside this base, below the 18-month line, you've, you're about to break the trend line, but it's not giving off any major signs. So this is kind of important. Just to, It's a nice piece of uh, evidence to keep an eye on. So uh, use that to your advantage in this environment. We're in an environment where relative, perform relative performance of a stock, how it's reacting to the market is at a premium right now. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. So uh, my research can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. The individual package has about two to three reports each week, plus a special video for that package. But I, I've been recommending guys, if they want to learn more about my approach, is to start out with the book. I'm offering at a discount right now in a PDF format. Uh, so if you go to rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book, you can find out more information on that. Okay, let's get going on the individual symbols now. Okay, I want to start this out by looking at the S&P. This is one of the charts that it's actually the last chart on my Monday uh, report that I send out each week. And um, I've got the short-term positives and the long-term positives, and it's a cumulative 
of the stocks that I go through one at a time. And what I'm trying to identify are what stocks are in short-term uptrends, have short-term positive momentum versus the stocks that are showing uh, more of a trend in, in their patterns, uh, more longer-term patterns with improving momentum. And what I wanted to point out is that I, I notice and have used this for a very long time when the cumulative number, so what we're looking at right now is at 19%. That's right here. Okay. And when we get down, I would say right around this 20 mark, it's typically pretty oversold. And usually overbought is around the 80 mark. All right. And so what this is doing is instead of being like a market indicator where we're looking at the S&P, we're taking each individual stock and determining whether it has short-term positive characteristics uh, based on its trend and momentum. If it does, then it goes into this category. And if you can see, we, we've been declining since August, and now we got our first uptick. Last week, uh, two weeks ago, it was at 13%. Last week, 19% um, on Monday. So we're getting our first uptick. Now, if we look at the bigger picture pattern, we're, we've been deteriorating, and it didn't really, you know, it went flat this week. It hasn't actually shown signs of improvement, but it didn't deteriorate any further either. But if you notice, we didn't get extreme. We haven't been getting extreme this year. There's no extreme readings. This is only uh, about 55% reading uh, to the upside when you look at the trends themselves. So we got an extreme reading off the lows down here, but we haven't really had it on the way up. And so it's very possible that we could turn into some kind of a channel here where we, where we channel out for a little bit. Um, as opposed to looking at this being the start of a big move like it was here or here. You see what I mean? Like, well, that was actually a really good trading rally in the decline. But I think it was all a part of the reversal of this bottom. We might be in for something like that right now. But um, this the one I just wanted to point this out. Now, I don't go into detail in this show um, on the S&P just because uh, to, on uh Friday mornings, I put out in my YouTube channel, Invest Like a Pro, I go in-depth on uh, the S&P. I look at all the time frames. I look at the uh, sentiment. I look at volatility. I go through all of that in detail. But I do want to just point this out. Look at what's taking place here. We've got a break of the trend line from the low, right? And now we've rallied up. We can see that using the zigzag. We've zigged down, and now we've zigged up. And so because we've done that, we can now put in our horizontal lines here to frame this out, okay? This is a sort of classic trend uh, analysis when you look at a trend line break as the number one. Two, we've formed the two now because we've lifted off this uh, bottom and we have tested, we're, we're in the process of testing this uh, area here. Now, if we were to turn down, that would be the three and that would complete the reversal of the trend to the downside. It would also take out all of these key levels that I've been talking about over the last month. Um, but right now we're just in this transitional phase. We're, we're not in an uptrend anymore and we're not in a downtrend yet. We could be just bouncing around and setting up for another up move or we could be bouncing around and setting up for a down move. But right now, this is a tricky time. So you just want to be aware of that. Now, because this was such a massive green bar off the low, and we have, uh, let me go ahead and go to the next chart, which is the uh, QQQ. We have a very nice pattern on the QQQ on the uh, monthly. Th this is much stronger. Look at the relative performance, as I, I talked about in the lesson. You see how this is hitting another new high right now? And uh, that's sort of a leading indicator. See, this is hitting a new high, even though price is not. So it's telling you there's a lot of strength here. So even if we work up on the S&P just inside the range on the S&P, this could actually break out just based and work its way back up to the highs. There could be some pretty decent. I think this is a tradable rally setting up. It could turn into more than that. But right now, I would consider it a tradable rally, especially if we get any kind of hesitation, pause, or pullback. Don't necessarily be looking for some kind of a deep correction here because of the way this took place, where it took place in relation to the S&P support, and the dynamics of the move off the low. Do you see how we just keep rallying up and up and up? This is turning into kind of like the beach ball out in the ocean where people are expecting it to come back, and, and all it does is kind of keep drifting out further and further. Now, you're going to get a pullback at some point, but I think you'd be much better... Um, 
I, I think you'd be better off just waiting and watching the individual stocks right now. If you get a good setup on an individual stock, uh, in the especially in the technology area, some of the dis consumer discretionary areas, and then sort of stock picking outside of that, um, I think uh, you're you're probably going to have some pretty good. Um, you could have some pretty good success, but we've got to be careful right now. This isn't the type of market where we just ended a bear market and we want to get long and just forget about it. It's not, I don't think it's that kind of environment. It's not my opinion. The volatility on the weekly chart is starting to increase here. So we've got to watch that. It's something that, again, that I cover on uh, Friday morning. All right, let's go to this IWM. Um, and this is the this is the real reason why I want to be a little bit more cautious right now, rather than just diving in and assuming that we're going to start some big move. Typically, this line, this relative line, is not declining when we're getting ready to make a big move to the upside. Now, it could turn up, and it could start to turn up here, get through these moving averages, and start to show signs of strength. Then I'm going to warm up to this and think that maybe this is the start of something a little bit more significant to the upside. For now, I think we got to be a little bit more careful. I'm not saying not to take uh, trades if you get good trade setups, but you got to be a little bit more careful right now about how much exposure you want to have until we see a little bit more improvement in, in the breadth category, which is essentially what ID, IWM is doing. All right, let's look at the TLT again. I think we got to keep an eye on this, mainly, uh, mainly because um, as we look at the TNX making a peak here, this uh, I think this is somewhat intriguing just because of the volume pattern. You see the volume? This is massive, massive volume. It leads me to believe that we're probably going to get a little bit better rally than just maybe a couple weeks and then just fail. I bet this turns into something that takes a little bit of time. Um, in terms of uh, consolidating. And again, that would probably help benefit uh, the market, at least in the interim. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the start of a big, huge uptrend, but it could help it in the uh, interim period, especially when you look at the bigger picture uh, momentum and everything. It doesn't, this is going to take some time to turn around if it is turning around here. Um, as far as the TNX goes, the five mark is incredibly important. All right, now here's another key, I think, for the market here. And this is something that's helped me warm up, at least again, in the intermediate, uh, short to intermediate term. And that is the fact that this held this 400 mark. It came down, undercut it for about an hour, and then turned right back above. This 400 mark in NVIDIA, I think, is so important because you see this big up move? This was essentially the gap up area where it came uh, um, where it came out with its earnings and surprised everybody with its AI. This was the AI this was the start of the AI move, all right? If we gave back that and broke that, I would view that as being incredibly negative from a psychological standpoint. So we survived this and we're actually getting a pretty good rally off the low. Um, this stock continues to be in a really uh, strong trend. In fact, let me go back and show you what I was talking about in the lesson. Look at the, this is the bear market for 2020. This is the COVID drop. Look at what the relative strength line was doing. I mean, this was screaming that you wanted to be on the lookout for that. You see how it bounced right off the 18 month line. So th these are the types of factors we want to take into account when the market's dropping. This can be an incredibly helpful tool. Um, and so this really hasn't given up that much. And I think the 400 mark is still the key to keep an eye on on this one. Okay, so I got a question on playing the ANET for a short play, and the argument was sound, all right? We have, we have a trend on the upside that is strong, but it's overbought on the, uh, on the monthly. We've gotten stretched away. We're getting a little stretched away on the weekly, right? We're what it looks to be like a potential for losing a little momentum we ha it's not confirmed yet because we would need this to turn down for this to really truly fail at the 25 line we haven't done that the volume pattern really isn't that bad yet and the one thing i'll tell you is the overall structure is not showing signs of deterioration and we just had a big monster green bar i mean the big monster green bar if that comes at the end of a run so let's say we get this move to the upside and then you get this big green bar that's where I want to be thinking, okay, I could, I could get some kind of a pullback because this is getting, um, this is probably going to uh, show in a little bit of exhaustion. But this is actually an igniting bar. You see what I mean? So I'm actually more inclined, if I'm a trader, 
if I'm a trader. Now, the argument was I'm going to look for divergence here, momentum loss. We got that. And play it for a move from, say, 212 down to about 200, the pullback area. Now, I don't. I think it's, it's a very sound uh, trade uh, thought process. I have no problem with that. What I would tell you is, is that I kind of want to avoid the ones that are just showing this much strength. I mean, I, I would I would like to look for the ones that maybe make a move up like this, get a little extended, but don't have the dynamics. Look at the volume pattern and the strength behind this move. I'm really fighting that. And I'm also fighting the strength of the QQQ, right? I'm doing ANET. This is one of the strongest stocks in the strongest sector of the market. Relative strength is hitting a new high. For all those reasons... If I'm a trader, I'm actually looking for this divergence to fail and I'm looking at the zero line reversal and I'm thinking, you know what, this is something I might want to be looking at for a trade to the upside. So that's how I would look at it. I don't usually like to fight the market. It's if When there's gaps involved, be very, very careful about doing um, short trades against it, all right, even if there's signs of exhaustion. Um, okay, so uh, Dell looks pretty good. Um, I, I think this is an interesting setup where we have a, a nice pullback here. It was a pinch play with very strong momentum. And then we got this ABC corrective pattern, zero line reversal, low ADX. You could have gone down to the hourly, seen this move here, and right about 67 and a half with the improving strength here, you could have gotten in this here and not necessarily waited for this trend line break. You could have jumped the gun a little bit using the uh, hourly chart. Okay, um, KO. I don't like the looks of this. This is something that is rallying into resistance. It's showing poor relative strength. Um, the hourly is starting to kick in. I probably want to look for some kind of a reversal pattern here because it did have pretty good strength to the upside. So maybe we come down, bounce off these lines, and rally back up. And then you could potentially play this for a trading short. Don't look for this to fall apart. I think this is a poor relative performer, but I don't know that there's a significant amount of downside in this one. Um, look at Adobe. So Adobe is making this move, and let's just look at the relative performance line. You see how this is hitting a new high? So we've got the next big round number here at 600. That's where we started to come into some problems here. So um, I would consider this more of a hold um, I guess you could try and trade this. If you got a setup on the hourly and traded it here, you could do that. But just be a little bit careful because this is a pretty big V bottom here. And it, it it's only spent a little bit of time working sideways. I think it's going higher. Don't get me wrong. But I just, I don't know that I'd, I, I think I'd probably want to play this off the uh, daily chart, not off the weekly in this situation, because I don't know how much upside we're really going to have in this. Okay, so we're finally getting a low, uh, a legitimate low forming in Disney. So let's just see how just how important this is. I actually think from a price standpoint, it's pretty it's pretty key because so here's how I look at this. We have this in key low here. We got this key here and key low here. You got all three of these. It broke it and stayed below it. Unlike this one where it was down for just a marginal period of time and turned back up. It was below it for three weeks, two weeks. And now is turning back above. So what does that tell me? What that tells me is it's probably overdone. I mean, really overdone. And the, the reason why I think that is, is that if you're breaking a key level, you should have follow through to the downside. Since there was no follow through, now we're getting a little bit of a green bar after two jo doji bars. See if this MACD can turn up from here. We've got a little bit more confirmation. Again, I'd like to see green DI turn up and red DI turn down, and that would really convince me that we could get a little bit better rally off this low. But I think that the risk to the downside is pretty limited. I don't think I would go crazy unless I got a setup like a pinch play or something like that on the weekly chart and then played this off the daily. Um, it's still going to be a long road back, but I do think it has made a pretty key bottom. Um, I don't like the looks of what's going on in energy. We are on the, some of these bigger names, the ones that have the biggest influence on the XLE. They're breaking their 18 months lines. And uh, CVX is really looking poorly. Um, I noticed a few others of these big stocks are, uh, are in the same process where we're getting a little bit of a rollover pattern. Um, you can see what's going on on a relative basis again. You see how this line was rising here and now it's falling. Now we're crossing back below the falling line. It's a little bit concerning. Now, I do think there's underlying support. I'm not looking for these to fall apart, 
But when we're talking about where we want to be exposed right now, this is probably an area that I don't think I'd want to be jumping the gun on. I don't. I wouldn't be looking to buy pullbacks in this right now. I think there's more weakness coming. I think this could come down under 100 even, um, maybe down in the mid to high 90s. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, let's look at TTWO. This is more of what we want to be focusing our efforts on right now. We've got an 18-month that was declining right? And is now rising after a three-month pullback. Okay. We're getting a turn to the upside on their earnings. And we're breaking this little mini downtrend line with um, MACD kind of turning up and we have no real sign of selling strength here. So lots of improvement. We're going to probably need some kind of a little um, hesitation or pause on the daily chart, but definitely something to watch as we're getting a bigger picture turn developing in something like this that could have a pretty good intermediate term trend uh, develop. Thanks for watching the show. My research can be found at rablestockresearch.com and my YouTube channel is called Invest Like a Pro. Uh, if you have any stock requests, send them to stock talk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.